everybody welcome back to the channel welcome back to uh, the garage here today's plan is to work on the Nova which is uh, currently hiding under the car cover here we need to hook up the bump box readjust my Caltrack bars because uh, one of them came loose and I adjusted the track but I want to do it again on a nice flat surface so we're gonna do all that stuff today to get ready to go racing first though I gotta do a little bit of work on the Jimmy. Encountered a problem on my way home from work today. So uh, let's get to work. So I didn't really plan on working on the Jimmy today. I wanted to work on the Nova. But uh, when I got home, I noticed it was kind of making a banging noise. I thought there was something maybe in the back of the truck just banging around. And when I got home, I noticed that the, uh, the shock was dragging on the ground. So it looks like the shock mount up there uh, broke. So I'm going to pull the wheel off and we'll take a look at what it is. And it should be a pretty fast, easy fix. And then we'll get to work on the Nova. All right, so I pulled the wheel off. Go down here and what you can see what happened is this bracket right here, it just broke. So probably what I'll do is just flatten it out, clean it up. And I might actually just weld the stud that goes to the shock right to there. Because I'd like to take this right off and fix it nice, except it's riveted on, and I'll never get up in there to get the rivets off. So I think for now, it's got this stud like this, big stud here. I'll just clean this up and I'll weld this directly to, to that bracket, and then I think that'll be good. Good enough for now, at least, anyways. I mean, the only way to get that bracket off would be to cut the rivets, which would involve taking half the truck apart in the back here, which I'm not doing. So, yeah, I'll clean this up and then weld that on there. Okay, what I actually decided to do is I got some thicker steel here, and then I made a little template onto there, and I'm going to cut this out, and then I'll make a kind of a little piece that will weld on top of there with a hole drilled that that'll bolt into like factory and hopefully that'll be good. All right, so I got this little bracket piece made and I drilled the first hole and now I'm gonna use this unibit to uh, drill the bigger hole. I get some WD-40 to lube that up. And before anybody says anything, I know that uh, this drill press turns kind of fast. Clayton's already pointed that out, but I don't know. This is as slow as I can get it to go, so. All right, so there is the piece. And then this bolt. And of course, the threads on here are pretty screwed up, so I'm just gonna weld this directly to this all the way around, and then weld this to the truck. All right, so there it is, welded on. Now I'll let it cool for a bit, and then I'll weld it onto the truck, and it'll be done. I got it all welded back together, I shot it back on, but I have noticed that there's definitely not a lot of uh, length there of the shock. So I'm wondering if that's why it's broke. It's been on here like that for quite a while, and it's never broken before. But when I got this truck, it was already lowered. Like when I bought it back from the guy who had it uh, he had lowered it already and these are the shocks I'm guessing that he had used they were with the truck and I put them back on but I wonder if I should try to get a a shorter body shock that has more play in it well whatever we won't worry about it right now put the wheel back on and get this thing out of here we got the truck out now we're gonna get to work on the Nova to get it ready to go racing this weekend so what I am doing or what I want to do now is I have an MS3 Pro Ultimate in here and it has a built-in bump box. If you guys don't know what a bump box is, basically once you pull into the pre-stage beam, you can hit the trans brake, start building boost, and then you hit the bump box button and the car will jump forward, like steps, one little step, two little steps, until you stage. It's a way of building boost before you fully stage. So pretty much you just use you just use a button like this which I got from Summit and you can mount it or I want to mount it somewhere on the steering wheel 
kind of like here. I'm going to have to make a little bracket to hold it. My trans brake goes off of here. So in order to wire this into the car, you need to use a solid state relay. Uh, it's a relay that can handle the uh, extra voltage, I guess, or whatever. So pretty much this is the kind of relay that you use. I ended up ordering one off of eBay a year ago or something when I first hooked everything up in the trans brake and all that kind of stuff. And I ordered the wrong one. That's why this one is here. Um, yeah, the one you need is like SSR 40 DD. And this one is DA. So that's why this one was no good. So because I already have this mounted in the car, hooking the bump box up to it or the bump box switch was super easy, except it's kind of hard to look under the car. So I made up this little diagram to kind of show you guys. Power to this one, ground to this one. This one goes to the trans brake. This one here has a wire that goes to the MS3 Pro for the trans brake. And then one that goes from the button from the button to this one and then from the other side of the button you go to the ms3 pro again so there's two separate wires and we'll go over the computer and we'll see which wires i used there we go we're going to open my last project which is the nova okay so once it's connected you go to advanced engines and then here's your trans brake and you'll see the input for the trans brake is digital switched in three right here Let's see if you guys can see that and then for the bump box which is the turbo staging button it is digital switched in two and I'll show you guys there is varying there's a whole bunch of different settings you can set it to that's kind of the ones in the instructions that it tells you to set it to and then here you can set um, this says release time and on time and main move so it only for every one press of the button it only moves once this this says how long the trans brake should be reactivated for between each step this should be set long enough to fully grab again which it does and then this is how long it releases for. How long to release trans brake for each move step. This should be set long enough to move the car a little without gaining any speed. So you can, you can change it up or down depending. So if you pre-stage, you hit the button bump once, it might take you all the way into full stage and you might have to bump it twice, but you might want to just set it so that it bumps once only instead of bumping more than once. You have to kind of figure out what the distance between your pre-stage and your full stages uh, we looked it up online apparently it's 17 inches but that kind of sounds long I think when we go to the track I'll probably grab a tape measure and go measure it just to see so I already have the switch wired in it already works etc I can show you guys after uh, so what I have to do now is I have to make some kind of mounting tab to be able to put the button on all right so what i'm doing is i took the steering wheel off the cover off i should say and i took a piece of cardboard and i kind of made up this little tab figuring that it's going to be like this and then hopefully just use this existing screw hole for the the cover like this part and then it'll just sandwich in between here and the back of the horn and that should hold it in place so i made this out of cardboard like this then I made one out of aluminum like this, which basically is going to go there. So now all I have to do is kind of bend it so that it'll fit around this part here. Now I could cut, I guess I could cut some of this off right here. I'll probably cut this with a razor blade, this raised portion here, so that there's a little bit less of a step. Maybe actually if I cut that raised portion, it probably would just go right on. I actually put a little cut in it right here so that I can undo it and take it off. Like pull it out and leave the bracket but take the cable out if I don't want it in there when I'm driving on the street. But I've run into a little issue now 
it's good. It's where I want it to be. I can hold the steering wheel and press it. So it's good. And then while I'm holding the trans brake with this hand, right? So I need to have it on this side, but it's hitting here, the turn signal lever, because this button sticks out so much. But what I figured I can do, if you take this little black nub off, you can see there's little bumps. If I just cut the first bump off, move this in a tiny bit, then it'll clear. Because look how it's basically clearing, just hitting there. So if I get rid of bump number one and just move this in a tiny bit, it'll clear no problem. So I'm just gonna cut that off and hopefully we should be good. So there it is. Get a better shot of the whole steering wheel. And then I actually put one of these kind of connector, no connector, whatever you call it, uh, clamps to keep it away. I actually ended up having to straighten this out because it was still hitting. I'm still not quite sure, like turning the wheel all the way. It seems, you know, it binds up some, but Clayton says his does that too. I don't really need to turn that sharp at the track to like turn around at the end. So I think it should be okay. Uh, yeah, so it's all hooked up now. So that's good. We'll play around with it at the track if we have to. I'll test it out in the pits or on the street or something before the track. Uh, but that uh, looks like it should work good. So I got the car up in the air now and I drained the oil out and now I have the new oil. So this is the new filter. It's the ones that I use Wix filters on the Nova. And this is the 1540 Rotella just poured into this container because it's a big, uh, big jug. So I am going to pre-fill the filter a little bit, put it on and then fill it up with oil. Then that'll be done. And then we just have to adjust the Caltrack bars and we should be pretty much ready to go to the track. Adjusting the Caltrack bars. The reason I'm doing that is because when I originally adjusted them, I, you basically bottom them out. I'll show you, you bottom them out and you can turn them like a quarter turn, half turn, full turn to preload them. I only had them about half a turn and then the driver's side one, I guess it must have loosened off. And so I wasn't sure if it had moved or not. So we reset it at the track. And when we reset it at the track, we put weight on the driver's side, which is kind of what you're supposed to do. But I think after doing that, it didn't seem as good. So I think maybe it likes the way I had it. And the way I did it before is I had just set both bars like half turn to preload past where it sits with nobody in the car. So I'm gonna set them back to that. And I mean, really, I only have to adjust this one. And then I can kind of check the other one. We got uh, Zoe, the shop dog. Hi, Zoe. She's in here. Uh, she didn't want to be in the house by herself. So I'll kind of show you quickly what you do. So with the Caltrack bars, when you loosen this bar, you can see this goes up and down you see so getting it to basically zero is turning it until this right here bottoms on the leaf spring like right there and then after that you just turn it a little bit of preload and then tighten up the nuts they, there's just rod ends on here and you tighten it up and that's that so I'm just gonna quickly do that and then uh, I think we should be pretty much ready to uh, head out to Clayton's to uh, load up into the trailer and head to the track. video so you're gonna have to tune into that so like always like comment subscribe share with your friends we'll check you later